Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest and welcome to April the 4th, 2024. Another day done and dusted on the ASX, although that is not absolutely true because the time, according to my phone, is 3.05 p.m., which means closing auction has another five minutes to run or approximately five minutes. And who knows what's going to happen in the next five minutes. Maybe they'll panic in the streets and the market will fall about 3%. But at this point in time, as I am speaking, the market is up about 0.45 or 0.5%. A good day on the markets, a good day for gold, good day for copper. Otherwise, it was actually a fairly boring day. Um, hope you like my new uh, background here, a free landscape photo I found. I also have my own landscape photos I could use, but I thought, this would be nice to have this as my background, uh, these sort of photos. So I might uh, change the background every single day. Now, another thing I have done differently in today's video is I have a schedule. Yes, I have a schedule. I came to my computer a little bit early, and when I realized today was really boring, nothing really to look at, I thought I would just uh, decide what I'm going to talk about in today's video. And here it is. Here's today's schedule. So right now we're doing the introduction. I've already talked about copper and what a boring day it has been. Also talked about gold, but I'll show you the copper chart if I don't forget. I didn't actually put it down on this schedule. We'll look at the ASX today. An okay day. Uh, markets are up. Uh, most uh, of the sectors were up that I can remember. Maybe one or two. Was, actually, one was down. That was um, Staples. So hopefully you haven't gone completely defensive and put your all, my, all your money into Staples. And then we'll have a look at the announcements. And to be honest with you, nothing happened today. Nothing happened at all. Uh, Hillgrove Resources, which is a company I owned, released an announcement. Share price popped up on that. But copper popped up today as well. Because So who knows why Hillgrove share price went on a bit of a run. Um, 29 Metals share price went on a run. I'm assuming Sandfire, Aries Resources, the Aries Resources share price went on and runs as well. Also can have a look at a few Appendix 5Bs that have been released. Now, typically, if a company releases Appendix 5B this early or 4C this early, nothing much is happening with those companies. So we'll have a look because we have plenty of time. Have a look at those particular Appendix 5Bs, very small companies, mining companies. Then we'll have a look at LaVisa's half-year results. Now, they did not release their half-year results today, but I'm just going to go through their presentation. This is one of the presentations I went through last night, and I'll just show you why I'm a really big fan of this particular company. Not the products they sell, because you'll never see me in the Visa store. I will walk past some of the stores and I'll look in and go, oh, it's busy today. And as a shareholder, I would love to see uh, these stores a little bit more busy. But I'll show you why I'm a huge fan of Levisa. There was an IPO today, a company with the TIG code BB1. I have not had a look at this company. I'll have a look at their prospectus. They also released a presentation today. So potentially, I'm assuming this is a mining company because 95% of companies listing in the last six or so months, even a year, have been mining companies. And many of them have been lithium explorers, uranium explorers, rare earth explorers, those sort of things. We'll have a look at the best and worst performers and nothing too exciting there. And then I'll show you some charts. Fish and Paykel, Juratech. Ramsey Healthcare and A2 Milk. And the reason I want to show you those charts is because the share price of all four companies are looking interesting in terms of where I do have my stop loss. In fact, I decided to sell Juratech just to take a 10% profit because I bought that company on the expectations of a bounce. Share price has bounced 10%. So I thought I haven't got to take profits with Juratech. The other three companies, I haven't taken profits, but those are three companies I'm keeping a close eye on. So let's get into what happened on the ASX today. The 4th of April, 2024. And as I get to the market index site, homepage, whatever you want to call it, uh, the closing auction has another about 26 seconds to go. I could wait, uh, but let's have a look at the company, Fisher & Um Closing auction, looks like the closing auction has been completed. So for those who don't know, uh, and I'm pretty sure um, many of you might not know this, even though we are in a closing auction, doesn't mean the closing auction will be completed at the same time every day. There is a bit of a leeway. And it looks like today the closing auction finished before 4.10 p.m. local time. And the reason I say local time, I'm talking about uh, Sydney time, not Brisbane time. And it's just gone. ASX is now closed. 
Open Friday. Yes, Open Friday. Uh, last week, it was not Open Friday. So four expectations that today was pretty good across the board, except maybe um, except maybe Staples. So uh, XJL up at 0.43% or, or 0.47%. Uh, tech had a nice little bounce up 1%. Let's have a look at the sector performers today. IT, best performing sector, then utilities, real estate, and Staples was in the green. So all sectors were up today. So hopefully you had a good day. Your portfolio had a great day. Uh, and um, we're all happy now because yesterday was a nasty day. Well, I shouldn't say nasty. It wasn't that bad. Uh, but some people might have considered it nasty. And the best performing indice... Looks like it was gold, up 1.12%. Now, let's confirm that. Uh, emerging companies actually was the best indice, up 1.22%, followed by IT, XIJ, and then gold, small odds, all technology, mid caps. So you can just see by that group of six companies, we had mining companies, a few mining companies, not a lot because I don't see materials anywhere here. There's energy, industrials. It's resources, not no, materials, resources, uh, only up 0.31%. So it seems like it might have been just gold and small caps and technology companies did well today. Small odds up 0 or 1.1%. Uh, so more than likely, my portfolios had a pretty good day to take. Otherwise, nothing too exciting happened on the ASX today, in my opinion. Uh, list of basic companies, upcoming dividends, nothing I really want to show you here at all. So the next part of the agenda is announcements. Now, I'm not going to go through the announcement list because, to be honest with you, nothing happened. Uh, one of the most, um, I was going to say disappointing days in terms of announcements, one of the quietest days I have seen for a while. Uh, so it all started off with Suncorp, Suncorp Group announcing they are selling their New Zealand life business. I don't really care about that. And every single announcement here was, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Even this Arabanda update, I don't really care about that, uh, that particular announcement. So I'm looking for particular announcements. Now, Pinnacle Minerals released a quality activity and cash flow report. So I'll show you that announcement in a second. And I'll show you how I filtered that out. But the only company or the only announcement that really piqued my interest was Hillgrove Resources. And the main reason is because I do own that company. Uh, as a copper play, and they're ramping up copper production and sales. So they've just gone into production. So hopefully the share price rallied a fair bit today. I'm assuming it did. It looks pretty stupid if it didn't. Yep, up 13.7%, up to 8.3 cents. Um, in fact, I'm assuming some of the other, I'm pretty sure 29 metals did, 16.5%. But I don't know about Aries resources. Nothing, I'm not sure why. And Sandfire, which is probably the biggest uh, um, copper only play on the ASX. I think it's only copper. I think it's copper only, but I could be mistaken. Uh, you hear some experts say, well, if you want to play copper, just buy HP, just buy BHP. Um, but that's URA, that's um iron ore, in my opinion, and BHP down. Down. So copper up, but PHP down. Um, by the way, before I forget, let's have a look at copper. So this is probably the most interesting chart today. And and I'm hoping it hasn't gone different direction. No, there it is. So copper, we're in a new day now. So I saw this in the morning. Copper overnight or yesterday, yeah, the Wednesday, third of April, up three point zero three percent. And today it's up another zero point nine two percent. So I'm not sure why Aries Resources is down. Just shows you BHP share price went down, but prices went up. So don't get fooled by experts who say, well, if you want to. Uh, play copper just buy bhp it's diversified no that's not the way you do it you buy a pure copper play maybe not a pure copper play but a big copper play and those are some of those companies i just mentioned pretty sure gold had a pretty good day yeah gold's still on the tear um nothing to be worried about when it comes to gold i wouldn't be be surprised if we see a little bit of a dip that would be fairly healthy but gold and copper look look absolutely brilliant iron ore is iron ore that went down today. So BHP share price went down, iron ore went down. Correlation, there's a big correlation. In fact, iron ore looks really weak. Uh, so this is the first time I looked at iron ore for a while, and this looks pretty, pretty weak. It's gone through a support level, 
went through that support level yesterday. So uh, I do have no iron ore plays at the moment in my portfolio. And the main reason is because of the chart. Okay, so let's have a look at Hillgrove. Um, I've gone on a little bit of a tangent. And this company has just gone into production and they've just mentioned they're ramping up their production. And they're ramping up at the right time, aren't they? So has completed the second copper production campaign from the Canman 2 underground copper mine. Copper production has ramped up from 239 tonnes in February to 589 tonnes in March. The next two-week milling campaign is underway with copper sales planned next week. I'm really looking forward to see how they performed in the March quarter. I'm pretty sure they will give us a quarterly cash flow report. And they've even mentioned the fourth point here. Increase in production has coincided with a favourable trend in copper price, which has risen above $4 a pound the first time since April 2023. Now it's up to, what was it, $4.23 a pound? Yep, $4.23. So it's uh, rallied from $4. Now onto the pennies, four Cs, no, five Bs, no four Cs have been released. I'll just show you how I filter this. Um, and this is for those who haven't seen me do this before. So on the Comsec page, we have um, a list of filters. So the first filter and really the only filter I use on a regular basis is market sensitive. I don't care about all the non-market sensitive announcements. Sometimes a real market sensitive announcement does slip through the gaps. For instance, the majority of announcements today were non-sensitive. So for instance, the last one was Sims Limited, change in substantial holding. Now you might say, that could be price sensitive. But some of the other ones here, daily net tangible asset statement, application for quotation securities, uh, portfolio update, which could be could be price sensitive. I don't know. But that's the main reason. And the main reason I want to filter this. So 351 events on the ASX today. Then I, I filter only looking at the price sensitive. And that's now filtered down to 77 events. And you can just see. Uh, only 77 invests today compared to 117 yesterday and 139 on Tuesday. So definitely a quite a day today for some reason. Now, to only look at Appendix 4 Cs, you click on Commitments, Test, Entity, Quarterly Reports, and just seeing if one has slipped through. One has not slipped through. This is Brew updating their Appendix 4 C for the December quarter. So because Appendix 4 Cs and 5 Bs uh, are released in April. Most of them, some of them are not. Most are released in April. Uh, I don't have to go back in time here. So no Appendix 4Cs have been released thus far. This is Appendix 4Cs. If you want 5Bs, you're going down a little bit to quarterly cash flow report. In fact, if none show up here, also click on quarterly activities report. And sometimes the cash flow report is missed because some mining companies lump the equal activities and the cash flow report together, like Resolution Minerals and Minical Minerals did today. Now, there was an Appendix 5B released. So if I just click back off uh, Qualities Activities Report, you can see um, Orion Metals released those two um, statements or reports separately into two different documents. So Activities Report, which is only two pages long. So this company doesn't have much activities. And they're right now, it doesn't have much activities and a cash flow report. So let's just open up the activity report for this company called Orion Metals. This is a shell. And I can tell you right now, it's a shell because they say it's a shell. Well, they don't actually say it directly, but they just say in the first uh, paragraph, the company's directors have continued constraint on investigating the acquisition of new assets by the company to increase value for the benefit of all shareholders and to source new funding arrangements as alternatives to support which has been provided as loans by director related shareholders over the last several months. Zero interest in this company. It's a shell. We don't know what they will acquire. And let's have a look at the cash flow statement. How much cash do they have? In fact, we're going to have a look at this Invest Smarts Funds Management too in a second. So let's have a look at the cash flow statement for this company. How much cash do they have? So of course, no receipts of customers because this is not a legitimate business. Business Burning through a little bit of cash, $43,000 in staff costs, $56,000 in administration costs. How much cash do they have on hand? Um, about $1.2 million. So if they do make an acquisition, this company will have to do a capital raising without doubt. So let's get to the two Appendix 5Bs that were released today. A company called Minical Pinnacle Minerals. I was going to say Minical Pinerals. 
I have um, Spoonerism. If you don't know what Spoonerism, just um, Google Lord Spoonerism or Spoonerism. So sometimes I mix up letters in words. So minical minerals uh, instead of pinnacle minerals. And a resolution minerals. Both of these companies are really small. So minical, pinnacle, I don't know why it happens for some words. Pinnacle minerals, $3.7 million markup. And resolution minerals, $4 million markup. These companies are small. I just want to have a look at the cash flow report. Don't care about the activities. This is what I do for every single appendix 5B or 4B or 4C. I go straight past the activities report and I have a look at the cash flow report. And I'm looking to see if the company has any receipts, none receipts, and fairly little or fairly small spending on exploration and valuation. This company is small just by the cash spend. And the other thing I want to see is how much cash they have. So $1.8 million of cash. They will have to do a cap raising within the next year or so. Now, if they have less than two quarters of cash, they will have to answer section eight but they don't have to because at this point, because they have 5.1 quarters of cash based off the cash burn in this particular quarter. Uh, so that's uh, whatever that company was. And the other company was Resolution and Minerals. Um, so, and they had very little activities reports. So they're not um, really selling anything and much at all. And very little spending as well. No cash receipts, only $113,000 of staff costs. $30,000 in administration costs, no spending on exploration, evaluation, development. Actually, there is in the investing activities. So they're capitalizing exploration and evaluation, but they only spent $84,000 in this particular quarter and the first nine months, $2.4 million. So it seems like they've stopped exploration and evaluation for now. You might be able to find out why in their activities report, which is only one page long. And how much cash they have? Very few. $335,000 of cash, but they're not burning through a lot at this point in time so they don't have to answer eight in fact they've got 2.3 quarters of funding left according to this so that's all i'm going to talk about when it comes to uh, the three appendix 5b's that have been released so far this particular quarter and to be honest with you these are sort of appendix 5b's that i spend maybe one second looking at and then i have to completely forget but these are the first three that have been released for the april quarter so why not give these three companies a little bit of time now let's have a look at the announcement they said maybe should be price sensitive. And these are really interesting. So if you like fund managers, so this is Invest Smart, um, it goes through the weighting of all their holdings. For So RPM Global Holdings, 7.5%. Auckland International Airport, 6.73%. CCL, 6.11%. Then Mineral Resources, West Farmers, uh, Pinnacle, Telstra, Reservoir. So interesting group of companies for Invest Smart Funds Management. Some companies I really like there. They have Ordinate. Frontier Digital Ventures, Objective, John's Ling Group, uh, PWR Holdings, Breville, Aussie Broadband, MA Financial, uh, ResMed. So many companies actually really like um, they've invested in. So uh, maybe I should take a closer look at Invest Smart and just put my money into this company because um, they probably have similar thinkings than similar investors than I am. What was that company in Invest Smart? What's the TIG code? Intelligent Investor Ethical Share Fund. Okay, yeah. straight away, whenever a fund has ethical, I'm going to ignore it because the term ethical is nebulous for different people. It's different for different people. Anyway, so that's all I have for the announcements today. A fairly boring day. Uh, Hillgrove and a few Appendix 5Bs that were completely pointless to look at because... Uh, nothing much happening in those few companies. Let's have a look at Levisa. I did have write down my schedule because I would have completely forgot. And for some reason, doesn't want to put in Levisa, L-O-V. And we'll have a look at the half year results. So up 1.42%. Now for these companies that I am owning or holding for long term, I don't really follow the share price movement all that closely. I will look at the charts of these companies every week or at the least every two weeks. Or at the most every two weeks, no, at the least every two weeks, um, preferably every week. So let's have a look at the half year presentation. And I was looking at this last night, and you, I should be able to point out pretty easy why I like this company. Uh, not because of the women that are on the, get rid of you, not because of the women there at all. And again, I have no intentions of ever going to a Levisa store. Um, so half year review. 
total sales up 18.2%. Now, what's important here is total sales up 18.2%, but global comparable store sales for the period down 4.4%, which is like for like sales. That's fairly important. But total sales of the company grew 18.2%. One of the reasons why I really like this company is because of their um, growth, their growth plans, their uh, rollout of their stores around the world plans. This company could dominate this space in five years' time. Maybe I'm being a little bit dramatic by saying that. The other reason I like this company is the gross margins are absolutely amazing. Uh, so 854 stores at the end of the period, 74 new stores open for the period with three new markets and presence now in over 40 markets. The three new markets they opened included China. Yes, they now have a Chinese store. Cash flow from operations, 150 million. Um, so let's have a look at some of the financials of this company. This is just half year numbers. So revenue, 373 million. Gross profit, 301 million. Look at that. Revenue and gross profit. Uh, and that's really unique when it comes to retail companies. The gross margins of this company are really unique. They do a really good job with their gross margins at 80.7%. EBITDA, 128 million. EBIT, 81 million. NPAT, 53 million. Just remember, cash flow was 150 from operations, 150 million. The reason why cash flow from operations is significantly higher than EBITDA, EBIT and NPAT and why I don't really look at cash flow from operations for these type of companies is because of leases. This company spends a lot of money on leases. Earnings per share 49.1, dividend 50, and that was a nice increase. Um, and then trading performance, nice. Look at the total sales each half year over the last eight years, nice increase. Slight decrease in um, 2021, but nice increase. Uh, and I really like this. This is another table that I really like. So sales in Australia and New Zealand, down a little bit, 1.9%. But I'd say they are probably fully mature in uh, these two countries. Uh, Asia, not much of an increase there, or neither in Africa or in the Middle East. But look at the growth in Europe and Americas. So Europe revenue grew 32.1%, up to 120 million. And this is now their biggest market. And America's up 46.3% to 91.4 million. So Europe and Americas is where they are focusing on growing this brand, which, hmm, I can understand that. Talking about gross margins, and the other thing is gross margins actually increased. Uh, decreased until 2021 and now has increased the last three um, half years. Earnings, don't really have to talk about earnings, uh, nice increase. Cash flow. Okay, so here is the cash flow. So cash flow from operating activities, 150 million. Then you take away interest paid, tax paid. But the most important thing here is down the bottom payments of lease liabilities, 30.2 million. They were also able to repay debt, 22 million. Also dividends, 34 million. Property plan equipment, capital expenditure, 14 million. And even though they did all that spending, they still were able to grow their cash by 27.5 million. Finished the half year being um, net cash, if I remember correctly. They were net cash. Uh, so not net debt, net cash. And that is exciting. Here it is. We can confirm that. And they did say it here. Net cash position at end of the year was 15, or end of period, not the year, half year was 15.5 million. So the easy way to calculate that, for those who don't know, cash, 58.5 million. And down, I don't include uh, lease liabilities. And I think a lot of people don't include lease liabilities. They only include loans and borrowings, which was 43 million. So 58.5 million minus 43 million net cash. Uh, assets of 104 million, so um, which is also equity. So you could also count, um, calculate return on equity. So $104 million of equity. Profit what was a profit, I completely forget. Now you can't really you can't calculate profit just yet. This is just half year results. So I'd have to count or need to know what the profit was for the previous half year. Um, and based off the profit of this year, 53.5 million, this company would have an absolutely amazing return on equity. Yeah, okay. That's one thing I haven't looked at this car. I just assumed I had a really good return equity, but I think return equity must be amazing. Do they actually even say return equity at all in this? No, they don't. Uh, okay, and this is really the reason I like the future of this company. Their global expansion um, 
uh, thingies, whatever you want to call it. And in this half year, they have a new, bigger, biggest market in terms of countries. And that market is United States. 207 stores in the United States, up for 190. Uh, I suppose even last half year or the full year, at the end of the full year, uh, it was their biggest market. Uh, so in the past year, this has now become the biggest market with 207 stores. Australia, 175. Uh, also pretty big in France, 80, South Africa, 77, Malaysia, 43, United Kingdom, 47, Germany, 51, Poland, 19, Canada, 10. And then we have quite a few uh, locations with only one store, Taiwan, China, Vietnam, Botswana, Spain, which I'm pretty sure they'll probably want to expand there, Romania, and that's it. So what else could they, where else could they expand? Not sure. Anyway. And there might be one more, new markets. Yeah, just talking about new markets, China, Vietnam. And I think that's all I want to talk about. And then trading updates. Really important when you look at the half year uh, results is most companies putting a trading update and comparable store sales for this period up to 0.3%. So last uh, half year, it was down. Now they're looking at increasing comparable uh, store sale increase and total sales up 19.6% from the same period in the second half of 2023. Open nine new stores. First store opened recently opened in Dublin, uh, adding another new market. So they're now in Ireland. So that's all I want to talk about when it comes to the visa. And hopefully you can understand why I am pretty high on this company, why it's in my long-term or my quality portfolio. It's definitely a quality company, one of the best quality retail companies on the ASX, potentially one of the best quality retail companies in the world. Okay, let's have a look at the IPO, BB1. Maybe they make um, BB guns, or maybe it's uh, BB King. Maybe they're singing uh, the blues, uh, BB King. No, it's called Blink Lab. So maybe it's not a healthcare, I mean, not a mining company, and we know it's not a mining company because it says healthcare, healthcare equipment and services. So they released and presentation. The first thing I do when there is an IPO is I look at the prospectus. I should have done this, open up this um prospectus earlier than I did because it's going to take a little bit of time to open this up. Okay, so share price 26.5 cents, trade history, none. I'm pretty sure they started trading today. Share price opened at 30 cents, so low 24 cents. And, and I'd say the volume, $1 billion worth of trading today, uh, 3.8 million. That's not billion. Is that billion? No, it's million. Oh, gosh, God. I was going to say, you're going to have 3.8 million shares traded and it'd be 1 billion with that short share price. Uh, anyway, so let's have a look. Early detection of autism. Okay. Revolutionary, so I have no idea what this company does. And I suppose the whole reason I'm showing you this is to understand what this company does. Blink Lab, revolutionizing mental health care through mobile solutions. Okay. So what I want to look at here is industry overview, 34. Uh, company overview, 53. Financial information, 57. We'll have a quick look at the board of management, 65. More than likely, I will probably have never heard of board of management. So let's go to page 34. So this is an overview of the market. You can get a lot of really good insights by just by looking at the industry overview. Uh, focused on the development and commercialization of smartphone neurobehavioral testing to aid in diagnosis of ASD, ADHD, schizophrenia, and other neurodevelopment conditions. And then you can look at the market. Maybe they will even talk about uh, these diseases or these conditions. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail in this particular um, video. Current testing and diagnostic landscape. They might be talking about the competitors here, what they're trying to do differently than competitors. There it is, competitive landscape. Um, so they're talking about the competitors here. And I'd say most of these I've never heard of. Sync, Think, Cognoa, Something, ETD, Linz, Linus, Bio, and Duke University. I've heard of Duke University because it's a university. Primarily a basketball university. Okay. Competitive landscape, uh, early tech diagnostics. So if you're really interested in this company, just go through all this. Uh, and then we can go to the company itself. Somewhere here. Company overview. There we go. So this company was incorporated. In 2021, this is a really young company. 17th of August, 2021. That's my ex's uh, birthday. Um, yeah. 
That's my ace's birthday. Good for you. Maybe I'll buy some Blick Lab shares just for him. Uh, she won't know why, but um, okay. Uh, 4.4 million has been spent on the development of the Blink Lab technology. So we get a, we get a fairly good idea what this company is doing. It goes into history. So as it goes all the way back, seeds of the Blink Lab technology sown in the late 1990s at the Department of Neuroscience at Erasmus University Medical Center in the Netherlands. Uh, so maybe you can go through the history and uh, try to understand why it's now listing on the ASX if they have sort of the beginnings in the Netherlands. Um, so maybe just looking at this, they don't, they are not selling anything right now. So they have no revenue, which sort of makes sense. One of the reasons why they might have listed on the ASX is to get access to revenue, which absolutely companies should do that. Get better access to uh, capital, money, and make sure you have a really good marketing team to sell it, the story. Um, and let's have a quick look at the prospectus, not the prospectus, what do you call it? The financials. Okay, milestones, that commercial preparation for launch, second half of 2024. And should we even should we even need to look at um, mark capitalization on completion of the public offer twenty eight million? So it's a small company. So more than likely, this company definitely has no, uh, and more than likely, these holders, largest holders, are probably the founders. They all have uh, well, Yurov, Yurov, Anton Yuvarov sounds Russian or Ukrainian, but the other good names sound fairly Dutch. Um, Bol, Bol, Peter, and Kokiakoak. So these are probably the founders of the company. And we should be getting the financials fairly soon. 57. No, risk factors. Risk factors is really good. I sometimes go through the risk. Why is that financials? Did I go straight past it? I must have went straight past it. So the board, executive director, um, co-founding director of several publicly listed companies in Australia, including Dimerics, Anctinogen, Actinogen Medical and Neuroscientific Biopharmaceuticals. So this guy has a bit of pedigree behind him. Um, Dr. Mr. Brian Liebman, Rezap. Something to do with Rezap. Founder of Rezap Diagnostics. That's interesting in itself. Uh, let's have a look at key personnel. This is what I want to look at. Um, and it looks like uh, da, 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 neuroscience at Erasmus University. So it looks like he might be the founder. Proposed CEO, yep, okay, proposed CEO. Uh, and proposed uh, chief scientific officer is someone else at Erasmus. So question I do have is why are they listing on the ASX? Maybe just uh, better access to funding and see if I can find the financials. They went straight past the financials. It says page 57, and I was pretty sure I was on page 57. Oh, okay, there's the financial information, nothing. Uh, they probably released financial statements yeah for, let's have a look at the financial accounts i'm assuming there's there's this company has no finances whatsoever uh so let's have a look so no revenue that's what i'm assuming where's the yeah just expenses this is the problem last time and i thought it wasn't a problem last time because there's no revenue uh, I thought maybe they had a lion revenue zero, but no, uh, just burning through cash at this point in time. And there's no point going through this. Total equity, $40,000. And that's why they list on the ASX. They also released an announcement, a uh, presentation today. And I actually do like this. When a company lists on the ASX, release a presentation. Early diagnosis of autism using a breakthrough AI-powered smartphone platform. Okay, so go through the um, presentation if you like something if you hear something you like in this video um blink lab is collaborating with world leading institutions princeton definitely heard of that penn medicine yep um baylor college of medicine city university of new york uh, mohammed v foundation for salary solid added it solidarity okay so let's going to talk about when it comes to bb1 or a blink lab an interesting company on the asx but it's not profitable not generating cash flow uh so this is a sort of company of that old, maybe think about in about five years, and there is a big potential that uh, the share price of this company will be significantly down if they don't release any positive announcements to the market. 
Uh, let's have a look at the best gainers and worst losers on the ASX today. What's the time? 3.41, plenty of time. And I have a feeling there's not going to be much to talk about here. It's my feeling. Okay, top gainers. This is my change. Finally enough, there's Blink Lab. There it is. Uh, and to be honest with you, this is why I knew there was an IPO today because Blink Lab came in third on the list of companies and it says ETF in the sector. I went, it's not an ETF. And I have never heard of Blink Lab. So I just opened it up and yeah, that's how I found out it was an IPO. But just look at the sectors. So most of the best performing companies today were small mining companies, basic materials. Uh, the largest market cap of these best performing companies was First Graphene, $51 million markup, and then European Metals at 41. So no big companies here. Uh, Clytus Resources had a pretty good day today. Pretty sure that's a gold producing company. I could be mistaken. So nothing of interest at all here. Uh, let's have a look at the buy market cap. Uh, WA1 Resources, Novonics, Sayona. Um, look at Hutchison Telecommunications, up 11% on $208 worth of trading today. There's 29 Metals, Trajan. There's Hillgrove, uh, Uranium. Appen's on the list again. So it looks like a little bit more interest in Appen. Sort of understandable. Share price had been going sideways. And maybe I can show you an Appen chart. I'll add that to the list, maybe, if I don't forget. And the worst performing companies, again, I don't think there's going to be anything here. So Urbanize, Mightycraft, Sprintex, Miramar, Moshio, Pelgol, Nexian, Olympio Metals, Native Mineral Resources, or, or Explore Technologies, Evergreen Lithium, Anagenics, Babulous Resources, Clara Resources. Really low turnover today, and those are the worst performing companies. And the highest market of all those companies was the first one, Urbanize, with a market of 14.8 million. This is the reason why I sometimes just go to market cap and just have a look at what were the best or worst performing companies by market cap. And we have Heartland Group. Don't know much about that company. AV Jennings, Callus Metals, and really nothing that draws my interest at all here in terms of possibly missing an announcement. Um, so nothing at all today. So again, today was a boring day. So let's have a look at charts. We'll start off with Appen because I just remembered Appen, A, P, X. And I did have a look at this chart the other day, not in a video, but I was just looking at the, looking at the five minute chart. And I saw a signal, and that was just the share price going sideways, but very going down gradually. Not I'm just going to refresh this because volume again is doing weird things. I hardly see the volume there, and it's going to open up at where micro app. I don't know why. And we'll go back to five minutes. Still really low. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we had that, um, because it's a five minute, you can't say when the share price of this company went on a run. And then share price went a downtrend and share price went all the way down to about 54 and a half cents back on the 25th of March. Then there was a nice little bounce, would have got excited by that bounce. And then the share price went sort of sideways or gradually going down. And then all of a sudden on open this morning, there was a little bit of buying. A little bit of buying on open. Share price rallied a few percent on open. And that was all the market needed to get excited and happen again today, up 12.2%. And look where the share price finished. The highs we saw on the 25th. Look at that. Even in the shorter time frames, um, technical analysis doesn't work. So there's a bit of resistance at this level. And the share price was really struggling to get above 64 cents. It struggled. When I say struggled, it struggled for the last three or so hours. Okay, so that's all I'm going to talk about when it comes to Appen. Uh, and to be, fair, to be fair, when you look at the daily chart, this run, remember that run, the share price, it was not um, a trend-breaking run. Share price moved into the long-term moving average channel and then pulled back, just like it did back in June of last year. Look at that beautiful run in June of last year, and then pulled back. Exactly the same thing we've seen here. The only difference is the volume was much bigger in this um, scenario. All right, so let's have a look at uh, the four companies I want to show you. We'll start off with the company I did sell, Jurotech. I just decided to take profits because um, the share price bounced exactly what I wanted. Share price bounced. So a little bit of weakness yesterday, just like the whole market. And I decided just to take profits today at $1.22. 
which um, is a nice 10% profit, just under 10%. Um, but that's exactly what I want. I didn't see much volume on the bounce uh, and it's gone into a resistance area. So I just thought, let's not be too cute and hope hope share price goes on a run from here. I'll just take my profits and put my money to um, other uses when it comes to Durotech. I still think this company uh, could be considered cheap, but the, just the chart here is drawing me away from taking a longer term position in the company. Uh, very close to selling out of, uh, maybe not close, but Fish and Paykel, he's been disappointing. Um, I have put um, my sell price at $22, but I was thinking of just ignoring that and just selling out anyway because the share price fell below the support level, and that's the whole reason I bought. So I was thinking that could be reason to sell, but I'm just going to give a little bit more time to Fisher and Parkle because they did release a slightly negative announcement, uh, sort of a recall. And I think the market is still digesting that. But I'm hoping the profit update the company did release when I bought that will result in the share price continuing on its run. And even if you look at the daily chart here, the share price is still in an uptrend. So I'm going to give a little bit of time to Fisher and Parkle, uh, a little bit more time to Ramsey Health as well. Uh, that did actually fall through my sell. Um, price yesterday. So I do have a sell price of $54. I could give this a little bit more room to run as well, but good, good, because the share price has closed just on the support level at $54. So good day today for Ramsey Healthcare up 1.6. The other thing I should not forget about Ramsey Healthcare is I have received the dividend from this company. So even if I sell now, uh, I might still be in profit with this company, but uh, share price is not doing what I want to do. And the most recent high was actually lower than the high before it. So chart does not look as good or as promising as it did when I bought in. Uh, the other company I want to show you is A2 Mill. So this company had a negative day today. And this is why I want to show you this company. So yesterday, I wasn't really concerned about A2 Milk. Now, the good thing, oh, actually, no, not quite as negative as it was. Okay. So when I started this video, the share price of A2 milk was 580. And I do have a sell, like a stop loss, Nepi stop loss at 576. Share price was 580. I was thinking, oh, this is getting close. But the one day candlestick is a pretty good one day candlestick. A bit of buying coming in during the last bit of the day. It must have been the last five minutes or so. And yeah, you can see that uh, this the buying came in or started around, well, not the last five minutes. It started around about, uh, 2.30 local time. So in the last one and a half hours of trading, the share price ra rallied a little bit. Ra rallied a little bit, when, but when you do look at the five-minute chart, the share price is in a downtrend. I'd love to see the share price get back to $6. But anyway, you go back to the daily chart. If the share price falls below about $5.75, I would um, take my profits in a two milk. Uh, but hopefully this is the new low. So you can see the last two lows have been higher than the previous low. So we've had successive high lows. And that's how I put in my stop loss for A2 milk. If it goes below the previous low, that would be a bad sign moving forward. And A2 milk and Dicker Data. I've yet to sell a Dicker Data. I was going to give Dicker Data two weeks. And I should have sold based off that. I'm just hanging on. So I bought a 1088. Share price is 11. Share price is going sideways. I'm giving... This company a little bit too much room to grow or breathe. I said, I'm going to give Digger Data two weeks. And then if the share price doesn't rally after two weeks, I'll sell. Uh, I was expecting a bit of rally. Didn't work out the way I expected. But at this point, if I sell, not a loss. Up nice, a nice 2.42% today. Uh, so that's all I've got for today's video. Hope you've enjoyed um, this new format. Uh, hopefully it flowed a little bit more smoothly. I was thinking about doing a video on Wagner and whether that company is really or looking really attractive on a valuation basis. So maybe I'll do that tomorrow or maybe I'll do a standalone video on that. Uh, if you would like that, leave your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, if you have any questions, uh, leave those in the comment section of this video and I will be doing a answer and reply video on Saturday the 6th of April. So if you do want something answered or you want my reply, just again, leave a comment in this video or some other video I've released in the past week. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. 
that's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.